Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. I am the old school game snob, and this is the Firewall Frozen Orb Sorceress. It seems only fitting to start this video out in the River of Flame, though I doubt that Diablo himself has experienced the fire intensity that this sorceress brings. Have you ever experienced that problem where things are running around in your firewall and you can't even get them to die? Well, what we are going to do today is dial up that firewall to 11. 14,000 to 14,000. That is some 14 karat fire gold is what that is. Now when you cast firewall, things die they just they just die they, they just die immediately that's that's how we do firewall we just we just cast the firewall and things things well you gotta cast it right on the guy but when you do that things just die oh what happens when you have something that's immune to fire oh did i mention that she comes with an extremely viable frozen orb secondary skill she sure does no problem no problem taking out the other things that are immune to Cold and fire, what about Shank the Overseer? Let's give him a fire field. What about all his buddies? Oh man, he's dead. What? Where'd he go? He's already dead. <laughs> and what's cool about this build is it is actually really quite budget. Um, you will not have a hard time getting the gear. It's not the cheapest dirt cheap gear or anything like that, but it is really quite cheap. So let's take a look at that really quick. Let's take a look at the build here and then we'll talk about the gear. And of course there are upgrades. There's a pro version to all the gear and I'm actually going to separate the videos, right? I'm going to do a budget version of, of builds and then later I'll come and do, I'll do like a pro version, right? Like a maxed out version. But the point of these videos is to kind of get people up and running with a budget build of some powerful characters, uh, character specifications, classes, layouts, spec build. I'm just going to say builds. Uh, and uh, yeah, get you off to the races, get you up and running. Okay, so here's how the skill tree looks. All right, so we've got 20 points into Frozen Orb. Uh, we've got one point into Cold Mastery. I've actually got seven additional skill points uh, remaining here at level 88. So this build is, you know, basically good by 81, 82. You know, you could even do this at level 75, 70, 75, and it would be pretty viable even still. We've got one point, point into Frozen Armor. It's just handy to have that. Uh, we've got uh, 30 points into Warmth. That is because Warmth uh, is, has a synergy with Firewall, which is our main damage spell. We, of course, have 20 points into Firewall. Did I say 30 points? I meant 20 points, plus, plus, my, uh, plus my skill bonuses. <laughs> so, so 20 into Warmth, 20 into Firewall, and then 20 into Fire Mastery. And as you can see, that absolutely takes Firewall up to a, an insane amount of damage, 14 to 14k. That basically means that the problem of monsters running around within your Firewall and, and running out of your Firewall is no longer an issue because for the most part, things just drop immediately. And we'll run around and I'll show you some good places to, to hunt and farm with this character after we've looked at the build. But that's that's about it. Pretty simple. Um, we got, of course, the standard static field, telekinesis, teleport. Uh, you know, you can continue to invest points into cold mastery if you like. Uh, you could put some into ice bolt to get your frozen orb up, up a bit more as well. Um, but uh, that's kind of how you would spend your remaining skill points. Okay, let's look at the gear that I'm using right now. So obviously, Mage Fists make sense, plus one more to fire skills, right? Um, you could use a variety of gloves. That plus one is not going to make or break anything. All I've got right now for my budget gear is a Crystal Sword. I've got a, a Monarch Shield, which is, you know, it's not super duper duper budget, but it's pretty budget, right? It's not too hard to get a Monarch Shield. I've got the Harlequin Crest Shaco. You could also substitute this for something like Lore or uh, Peasant Crown get, just to get like another plus one to skills. Though that big life and mana is really nice, obviously, and Magic Find. Uh, for my amulet, I've got Telrashas. This is obviously plus two to skills, but you could substitute that for a plus three to fire skills or a plus one even would be okay. We're just getting the fire damage up a little bit more, but it's not actually even necessary to get it this high. For the rings, I've got uh, just a couple of rings. They're actually not even necessary. These are just kind of optional pieces that you can decide what you want to do with. These aren't really even a part of the build. Uh, and that is that is because these, this build doesn't really need faster cast. Uh, that's because the firewall and frozen orb are on a timer. So even if you have faster cast, it doesn't help that much. It does help with something like teleport. So that's kind of nice. But otherwise, you don't really need faster cast that mu much. Uh, Serpent skin of the Viper Magi, a pretty standard go-to, you know, budget sorceress, but also a really good sorceress item as well. 
you know, resistance, all skills, all that sort of stuff. So we've got our all skills up about 10 points, give or take, which is kind of nice. This can be improved a lot as you get better and better gear. But like I say, this is your budget off to the races and get you a slaying demons uh, build. Um, so yeah, swap that out for some magic fly and swap that out for some health, swap that out for whatever you want in the belt, you know, and even the boots, you could kind of swap that out however you want. Um, nice fast to run walk is always good. Uh, for the uh, stats, I've got enough to wear the monarch shield and uh, the rest into vitality. With this build, you really don't need mana. Well, number one, because your spells don't really cost a heck of a lot of mana. Uh, and number two, because you got, t you know, 20 hard points into warmth, mana is not an issue. <laughs> uh, this build really doesn't even need insight on your mercenary, so you could opt on something, you know, like, uh, or may maybe infinity later in the game, or or maybe like a more powerful, uh, I don't know, what would be, maybe Ogre Axe or something like that. Uh, what, what's it called? Uh, bone Hue? Bone Hue? Is it Bone? Yeah, I think it's Bone Hue. Anyway, uh, that's basically the build. It's pretty simple, but and it requires very little gear, and you could even be less, even wear less gear than this, and it would still be quite, quite good. Uh, so let's take this out for a spin, shall we? Since she does have those dual elements, she is able to quite effectively farm somewhere like Chaos Sanctuary. Uh, I guess those guys are fire immune. I better use the right element on the right guy. The Frozen Orb is pretty good. Uh, like I say, it's not the most most powerful, but Frozen Orb never really is the most most powerful clear out, but it's a very nice and functional spell. You run around, you throw Frozen Orb. It's a very utility. I really like how it works. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's take out some stuff here. Uh, you can see that she really is having no problem here with uh, fairly budget gear in Chaos Sanctuary, man. She just, uh, when something's not fire immune, man, it just absolutely melts. It is so fun to, to melt monsters with this fire field. Um, yeah, powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. I don't know. I almost say she, I, I would almost say she rivals the output damage power of the uh, Blizzard Sorceress, which we just did a video about. She's actually even got a decent thousand point damage blaze, just about thousand point anyway, which is you know, you can have that just cast as you run around. It's just a little extra damage for things to run around through. So she'd be quite, quite good at farming something like Eldritch, the Rectifier, since these guys are all cold immune, but not fire immune. And you just teleport into this nice little spot. Everything burns, everything dies. As for Pinvalskin, she handles him well. I like to throw a frozen orb to slow things down and a little fire field in front of my mercenary. And everything dies. Everything just goes down. Well, not Pindleskin, because he's immune to fire this time. It's a good thing we have that backup element. As for farming, she's quite good in the pit. Things in here are immune to cold, but they are not immune to fire. And uh, yeah, that fire field is just so strong. And the uh, creatures, the monsters rather, in this area are pretty light on hit points. So as you can see, they just melt. They melt like everything else. Everything just goes down. In the pit, of course, things are lightning and cold and fire immune too. Uh, but the things which are fire immune are the little devilkin, and they're just they're just weak and ineffective, so you don't have to worry about them too much. Otherwise, fire field for the win. In the ancient tunnels, it's a similar story. She goes around and she melts things. Anything that's fire immune gets handled with a frozen orb. The frozen orb is actually kind of nice because it slows things down, and then you can drop fire on those things, and uh, they uh, well they burn a little faster, a little easier. Melt, 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 <laughs> melting monsters all day long. <laughs> One of the problems for farming Mephisto for the Sorceress is that teleport spell usually makes you drink a lot of potions unless you have your Mercenary or your Insight with you. And then the Mercenary often dies to Mephisto, but because of this Sorceress's high warmth skill, even if she does start to run a little bit low on mana, it just comes back so fast. She doesn't really need to chug potions. As for Mephisto himself, static field, static field, static field. Little frozen orb to slow him down, and then we melt, melt, melt all day long. And we go watch my own health that poison i need a little bit of poison resist on this build but as you can see no problem now i'm not a huge fan of bail runs with this character it can be a little bit frantic and a little bit tricky to get the minions locked down the uh, venom lords seem especially resistant to fire so they take a little while some kiting some frozen orbs some running around in circles 
But how does she do? I bet you're all wondering at the Moo Moo Farm. How does she do handling the cows? Well, the fast ones are kind of fast. The minions are a little bit, a uh, little bit hard to deal with. As for the regular cows, well, not too bad. You run them around through the flame. Is it the fastest clear for cows? I don't know it's, if it's my favorite way to clear cows. The blizzard sorceress, I think, would handle this better. Um, but she can do it. Anyway, that's the build. I hope you have enjoyed this video. It's a fun class to play, or a fun build, rather, to play. I'll check you all for the next one. I'm going to be releasing more build videos over the next couple of weeks and really exploring the sorceress class and then getting into some other classes as well. All right, catch you all in the next one. Please subscribe for more Diablo content. 